Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, New York, woman has come forward claiming her child is my half-brother to try to get a part of my father's estate despite the fact it is impossible. What can I do to make this woman go away or pay for this stunt? Using an alt because this is just ridiculous, so here is the situation. My father passed about two months ago from natural causes and left everything he owned to me and my sister. His estate is worth over 5 million with almost half of that in liquid assets. His estate is still being split up now, but not because me and sister are fighting or anything. The two of us are just working together to see who wants what and figuring out what to do with the rest. But that is not the issue here. About a week ago a woman we will call Stupid Karen, SK or SB for short, contacted my father's estate attorney claiming that she had a secret child with him and demanded he get a third of the estate. I have never met this woman or even knew she existed until then, but apparently she is the daughter of someone my dad went to high school with, so it is not out of the question at first. But here is the thing, my dad was diagnosed with testicular cancer 15 years ago and had both his testicles removed. So unless this kid is at least 14, then it is impossible it is his. So entertaining the thought I met with stupid Karen and was surprised to find out this secret child is 9 years old and looks nothing like my father. During this meeting she demanded her child's share of my dad's estate and wants 9 years of child support in cash. She claimed she would sue if he was not added into the will. My dad's estate lawyer said that if stupid Karen's kid passed a DNA test he would bust. She refused. She claims she has a secret letter from my father acknowledging this kid as his own but refused to provide it. The meeting ended with my father's estate lawyer telling her to pretty much get out until she's ready to do a DNA test and her claiming she would see us in court. It is pretty obvious this is not my dad's kid, but stupid Karen is still trying to take from us. My question is, what can I do to make her go away? What kind of legal action can I take to make her disappear from my life? If she does try to take legal action against me and my sister, what can I do to make sure this woman gets what she deserves? And a user in the comments suggested, let your lawyer handle it, ask him to send her a letter telling her she is not to contact you at all, but only when she is ready to take a DNA test. If she does contact you, he will deem it harassment and pursue your legal remedies. They block her from contacting you. And guys, I gotta say, this is a pretty outrageous situation and I cannot even imagine to be such an entitled person like the woman in the story. I mean honestly, this goes much further than entitlement, but it is extremely disrespectful and outright fraud. What would be the first thing you would do if you were in this situation? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is titled, Update, woman has come forward claiming she had a child with my late father to try and obtain a cut of his estate. Seeing as the last post I made got popular, I thought I would come back and give an update. As much as I wished this ended dramatically with SD getting arrested or embarrassed in court, I am sad to say this is not the case. So after I sent SD the text telling her to stop contacting me, she began to blow my phone up with voicemails and texts. I saved them all obviously and forwarded them to my father's attorney. The day after I made my first post, my attorney had a letter sent to SD. I won't post the letter here, but I will paraphrase to the best of my ability while trying to interpret all the legal talk. If you believe your child's claim to my client's estate is legitimate, please submit to a DNA test at your earliest convenience. If an independent DNA test confirms your claims of my client's paternity to your child, we will see to having him compensated as according to local laws for the requested child support. On the claim of getting a portion of the estate, my client specified in his will that his estate would be left to his children, OP and sister. 
Unless you are able to provide the letter of recognition, as you stated in my office on the 22nd, we will consider that your child was either disowned or unacknowledged by my client and will proceed as such. If you are unable to provide the claimed letter, I advise you seek legal counsel of your own. On the topic of you continuing contact with my client's benefactors, I suggest you cease it immediately. They have made it clear that they do not wish to associate with you outside of legal dealings. If you continue to contact them, I have recommended they take legal action against you. The best part has to be how he ended it, however. If there is the possibility that your claims of my client's paternity to your child are misinformed or fraudulent, I suggest you admit to this and cease contact with me and my clients. If you continue these actions under false claims, not only will you be receiving a bill for my time, I will suggest that my clients take legal action against you. While this was going on, my sister tracked down SB's parents and got into contact with them. It turns out that SB has not had contact with her parents in multiple years, but that is not the important part. Apparently, this is not the first time she has done this. Apparently, she pulled the same stunt with another man when this kid was born 9 years ago and got paid off to leave him alone. I also forwarded this to my attorney. So, fast forward to this morning when I get a call from my attorney. SB is retracting her statements claiming she misunderstood the situation and no longer believes her son is my father's kid. So yeah, no big dramatic ending sadly, but I guess this is over. Thanks for the advice originally, I know some people were asking why I came here when I already had an attorney and to be honest, I see where you guys are coming from. I was pretty stressed and with this woman trying to steal what my father had worked his whole life for, I really just needed a place to vent and look for advice on what I should do. Thanks for that. And guys, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. It would be absolutely amazing if we could reach 1000 likes. Thank you very much in advance. And the next one is titled, Mother is going to be fired tomorrow in an act of age discrimination. My mom is a pharmacist in a large national chain pharmacy and she is 62 years old. For years this company has been just looking for reasons to fire her, we know this because she's consistently ostracized and blamed for things that are not her fault, held to a higher standard than her younger co-worker, belittled and encouraged to quit. She has been searching for another job for at least three years, but because pharmacy students are now graduating with a doctorate in pharmacy versus the bachelors she has, she's been unable to find other work. The company has consistently tried to push her to quit. In one instance, a customer came in and threatened to shoot my mother because she told him that his insurance would not cover a refill of a prescription until a certain date. This customer was allowed back in the store until my mom finally filed a police report, at which time corporate called her and told her that her manager should have banned this customer from the store after the first incident. There have been other issues to this effect. Ultimately, while I'm not sure of all the specific instances, there is significant reason to believe this has to do with her age. This company routinely pushes out older staff, they did this to my father before he died, in favor of younger staff they can pay less. She visited an employment attorney last year when things got really bad, who told her to return if she did get fired because they would have a strong age discrimination suit. I guess I'm wondering about getting more information on this type of thing. What kind of things would factor into a settlement? I know that for a settlement you need damages, what kind of damages would you claim here? Do lawyers in these instances work on contingency or is there a chance this lawyer is encouraging suing because she wants money from us explicitly? Would an attorney encourage a client to come back to them for a lawsuit if they did not believe there was merit for one? The lawyer she saw was highly reputable and expensive. Please pardon my ignorance, I am a third year pre-law student whose only parent is about to lose their sole income and has not been able to find another job for years. Thank you for your help. And a user in the comments said, damages would be lost wages, but there can also be punitive damages for willful illegal discrimination. That would be if it got that far, probably there would be some settlement before that point if your mother's case had merit. 
protected class discrimination can sometimes be plain as day, but other times harder to prove. It is not illegal to fire an older worker, but it is illegal to fire or otherwise treat them poorly because of their age. You appear to have at least at first glance a possible case for age discrimination. If she is fired I would visit a different attorney and see what his take is. Sometimes they will take a case on contingency if they feel it is strong enough. And by the way guys I know that some of my viewers are older and I'm curious have you ever faced age based discrimination? Let us know about your experiences in the comments and I'm actually curious is the age discrimination OP is talking about only related to older people or can it also apply to younger people? If you know more please let us know in the comments. And the next one is an update to the mother story. My mother got a call at about 11 pm last night that her pharmacy partner was sick and that her meeting with corporate would have to be rescheduled so she could work on his behalf. He also is going out of town next week and she has been added back to the schedule through that time because I'm guessing they could not find someone to fill in for her partner being sick on short notice and they could not hire someone new immediately because they would have no one to train the new hire. We are using the two weeks this brought her to reconnect with one of the original attorneys she visited. She's going to ask that attorney to attend the corporate meeting with her when it is rescheduled. In the meantime she's been looking over the EEOC information that a user in the comments provided. I would like to thank everyone for the information and advice they provided. I showed my mom the post and your responses and I think it gave her a little bit of a spark. She had been so resigned and beaten down prior so I cannot thank you guys enough. I know this update does not really offer much but my post did say she was getting fired today so it felt appropriate to let you know that we have some more time. I will update as needed going forward. Thank you guys again. And a user in the comments noted them moving the firing back may help her if she is fired. It would show she is at least competent in the job at least in their eyes. So document 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 as much as she can and talk to the lawyer again. Good luck. You know guys I gotta say I have a lot of sympathy of course for everybody who got fired during this pandemic. But especially for the older people because I know how hard it can be if you are older to find a new job. This was something my mother had to do when she was in her late 50s. So I know exactly how difficult it is. If you are in a similar situation please hang in there. You are awesome. I know you can do this. And the next one is the last update to the mother getting fired story. A brief overview of the situation is that my mother was called to schedule a meeting at corporate for the national chain pharmacy that employed her as a pharmacist. For reasons indicated in the previous posts and reasons I don't have much detail on this is believed to be due to her age. She had previously met with an attorney who had told her based on the information at hand that if she was to be fired she would have a strong case for age discrimination. Now on to the update. Last Tuesday, January 6th, my mother was called into corporate and was effectively terminated. She was told that her numbers were too low, the numbers in question relate to how quickly prescriptions are being processed and that she had 30 days to improve her numbers or she would be fired. During this meeting she was also told that the entire store's numbers were down and no employee was an exception to this trend but she is the only one being fired. She's going to get a print of the store's numbers, her numbers and her partner's numbers during one of her shifts. This is information that is public to all employees to print out. The obvious issue here is that the entire store's numbers are down and she's the only one being targeted. Her partner has slightly better numbers than her, still problematically low, but this is because he changes the times on the prescriptions he fills, which is not sanctioned by the company, but is quietly encouraged by a management. My mother does not change the times on her prescriptions which is the only reason her numbers are very slightly lower than his. The entire store overall is bringing in less prescriptions and her numbers are parallel to this trend. Essentially she's being fired because she's not filling prescriptions that are not there to be filled. She also revealed to me that during her time there reasonable accommodations were not made for her disability. During her first few years at the company there were stools in the pharmacy for everyone to sit on. 
Within the last two years the company removed the stools but only from her pharmacy because when she goes to other pharmacies to fill in for employees there are stools. She requested that a stool be provided to her because of her arthritis. She's a pharmacist, it is not unreasonable for her to be seated while filling prescriptions yet this accommodation was denied. Another issue that she brought to my attention is that the pharmacy cut the allotted hours for the pharmacy tax, yet the tax shifts were only shortened on my mother's days in the pharmacy and not her partner's, effectively leaving her understaffed, which impacts the numbers the company is referencing in her termination. At this point she's moving forward with lodging a complaint with the EEOC. She's planning to meet with the attorney she had met with previously to discuss what else she needs to move forward in potentially suing the company for age discrimination. Finally it was brought to my attention through my own research that this same company has been sued multiple times successfully for age discrimination by pharmacists of roughly the same age as my mother. Just wanted to offer you guys a brief update because you were so helpful. And guys unfortunately in this case I could not find any further updates and contacting the OP did not really work out as I did not get any response. I messaged some of the people in the comments from the previous thread and one of them did in fact tell me that the mother sued the company, however the outcome was not really clear. So guys unfortunately that is how far the updates go for this one. That is just sometimes how life is. And the next one is titled I hosted a child for a sleepover and still have her a week later. Advice? I had a friend and her daughter over for dinner six days ago and after dinner she claimed some stuff was happening with her family two hours south of our town and was going to pack the kid up to drive down on a school night. Kid did not have homework done and it was bedtime so I said I would drop her at school in the morning if the kid wanted to stay and do homework here and sleep over. Fast forward 6 days, mom has claimed she will come today or tomorrow just about every day since and then stops texting slash answering calls until the time frame passes. Meanwhile the child has a breakdown every time I prep her that mom is headed to get her at x day slash time, says no and that she wants to stay here. I get that our home life is reliable, stable, clean and better than her normal and that could be why she does not want to go home but also is this emotionally effing the kid up? She keeps getting upset and then mom does not show anyway. I have gently told mom that I will keep the kid as long as needed, I just need to know how long that is. I have bought her clothes since she came with none, I have kept her fat and clean and loved, she has not even asked about her mom or cried which feels very strange to me. What do I do? Do I have any legal ability to keep her if her mom never comes back? What point do I contact someone and who? I have her and my son sharing a room since we have two bedrooms and an office and he has been in a sleeping bag, she has been in the bed. I'm not sure I can let them keep that up if it's going to continue much longer but I also don't want to sink money into setting up another arrangement if she's just going to go home the next day. I am at a loss, we don't think drugs are involved, we don't know if the mom's story is true or not, I believe her but my husband does not. We are both glad she is safe with a loving family but we don't know what to do. Advice? And a user in the comments said, I agree with the other posters about calling CPS ASAP. This sort of thing is unfortunately too common and they are used to hearing it. Thank you for caring about this little girl. These are two things I have not heard here that are not legal advice but I feel are important to say. First, her mom may be doing the best she can in knowing that right now her daughter is safest with you, the way she's communicating that is not fair to you or her daughter but it may be the best she can do right now. Second, taking in foster kids, which is what this may come of CPS involvement if you agree to keep her, is really hard. There can be many attachment issues that you don't want to walk in blindly. Don't count on this being easy and it is okay if you don't want to take her in long term. Get a therapist involved. Play therapy is likely an appropriate therapy model but consult with the therapist. Your husband is probably right that there's more to the situation and despite that if the social workers advise allowing visits with mom, please follow this advice even though mom's actions are awful, none of us know the full story. And guys if you were in this situation, what would you do? And I gotta say I am kind of surprised that this situation is supposed to be pretty common. I really dearly hope that the person in the comments is wrong about this because I would not wish that this is common in America or anywhere else. 
And the last one is an update to the I hosted a child for a sleepover and still have her a week later story. Mom came and got the girl. It was very awkward how she reacted to her mom's arrival. The girl begged to stay and did not greet her mom at first until mom demanded she do so with the threat of never coming back here. As she was packing her stuff, mom revealed to me, with enough detail that I couldn't not report it, that daughter had likely been inappropriately touched slash <clears throat> assaulted at a sleepover some years ago. I immediately contacted the detective once they left and the case is becoming more serious now. She stated that is enough to get a CPS intervention interview for the kiddo, so hopefully with my gently telling her to tell someone if anything is wrong, if she is not fat, clean, safe, etc, she would speak up. But it is mostly in her hands. And guys, unfortunately, that was the last update to the story, so I hope in the end everything went alright. And unfortunately, that is sometimes how legal advice stories end. You cannot always have the most fulfilling or satisfying ending, but I hope you still enjoyed the stories for today. Either way guys, in the next upcoming days the videos might be a little bit shorter because I will move to a different location in Thailand because my girlfriend got her first job finally, so we will move somewhere else. Thank you very much for understanding and by the way, in case you haven't already, please don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripeyoutube for more exclusive Reddit content starting at $3 per month. Thank you very much in advance and I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.